What's going on, y'all? Chidi Delibe here again with another video. And, you know, it's really sad when we're seeing what's going on in the culture today and we're just seeing in certain areas where the facts just don't matter. It's just, facts are just not important. Nobody cares about the facts. It's all about emotion. It's all about the response. It's all about the victimhood. And I'm saying this in regards to a police shooting that happened over in the Chicago area in regards to a man named Harith Augustus who was confronted by the police in the process of being confronted by the police. Um, it was shown clear as day that he had a semi-automatic pistol holstered on, uh, holster on the side. And in the process of fleeing from the police, he then um, reached for the weapon clearly without a shadow of a doubt. And in the process of him reaching then for the weapon and trying to get the hold of the weapon, he was shot and he was killed. Those are the facts. Okay, he doesn't have, it was talking about he didn't have a prior history, he wasn't a gang member, but nonetheless, those are the facts. And it's still tragic because, you know, this is a man, he's got a daughter, now his daughter doesn't have a father. But what is the response from the surrounding community that was happening in Chicago in regards to this police shooting? Well, there was riots. But before any of that, I want to just show you this video so you can see for yourself and you can see the facts, you can see the live video feed, so let's go ahead and roll that right now. So now you saw the video, okay? The video showed clear as day, my man Harith had a weapon. Bill, uh, was it? Stevie Wonder could have saw it. Then he's reaching for the weapon, clearly puts his hand on his side. And I mean, at that point, what do, what do you expect police officers to do while he's sitting there, rusting, getting, trying to get a hold of it? I mean, what do you expect police officers to do? Do you really expect police officers to try and mace him? To try and tase him? Or do you believe a police officer seeing a guy getting ready to grab his pistol is now a threat to your life? It's pretty clear as day. But what is the response from the inner city community in Chicago to this shooting? Now, mind you, in Chicago, there were some other shootings that happened during this week span. But nonetheless, we should be going on a case-by-case -case basis as far as, this concern, as far as I'm concerned. And so before everybody started rioting, and mind you in this riot, you got, you got people jumping on cop cars. You got people laughing while people are jumping on cop cars, acting straight thuggish, okay, skullduggery, hoodlum behavior. You got people throwing rocks. You got people throwing bottles with urine in it. It's terrible. But before any of that took place, did anybody think for a second and maybe ask a couple questions? Did anybody say, hmm, okay, we got a police shooting. A police shot a black guy. All right. You know, the antennas are up. But let's, let me think about, okay, was he unarmed or did he have a weapon on him? Okay, he had a weapon on him. Um, did he resist arrest? Okay, he resisted arrest. Okay, doesn't mean you have to get shot. Okay, but did he, did he reach for the weapon? Did he try and shoot at the officers? Okay, he reached for the weapon. Um, okay, let's just go home, y'all. Um, there's nothing really more to do here. You see, nobody's asking questions. Nobody's sitting here and saying like, hey, what are the facts? Like, let's wait for the facts to kind of come in, for the video to come in. No, let's just light up the hood. Let's jump on some cop cars, throw some rocks, throw some urine. Like we're just a band of misfits out here. I just, I just don't get it. But see, this is what happens with decades and decades of Democrat and left-wing narrative telling the black community, y'all are victims. Republicans hate you. White people hate you. All right. Uh, you can't get in the school that you want. You can't get the job that you want. You know, nobody wants to. Uh, nobody respects you. You're the victim. It's like racism is going to come and get you. The boogeyman, uh, the, the big man, okay, from up above. All right. That white man in the government, he's going to come and take your stuff. He's going to stop your opportunity. It's not a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. So then when something like this happens, where even the facts are not in your favor in regards to a riot. You've been so programmed to think riot mode, victim mode, tear something down mode, that when the day comes, you're ready to go. 
Doesn't matter what the facts say. You see? And then when all when the when the CVS is burning down, when the neighborhood, the black owned businesses are burning down and getting looted. Then who comes and trots out? Well, then you got somebody like Al Sharpie coming out and saying, you know, we need to be peaceful. But see, Mr. Al, you can't, okay, inflame, can't build up the flames of victimhood and the flames of you're the victim. They're, everybody's out to get you. And then when everybody buys into that and then they start tearing down their neighborhood, you then cannot come into the neighborhood and say, y'all need to be peaceful. We don't need to do this. No. All you race baiters, all right, and race cons, you guys are the ones who are whipping this up. So you can't come in afterwards and tell people to calm it down. You see, I'm going to link it in the description box for the 2017 police shooting database in the Washington Post. How many black men were shot unarmed? This is an armed shooting. But how many black men were shot unarmed in 2017? 19 at least according to the Washington Post database, 19. Now, are all those 19 men just unarmed men with their hands up saying, don't shoot? Well, we know the hands up, don't shoot narrative was a lie, but nonetheless, are we just going to assume that all 19 of them were just walking the street and a cop just walked up and just dumped on them and just unloaded the clip and just killed them just for the mere fact of being black? We know that's not the case. And just because somebody's listed as unarmed does not mean that they're not a deadly threat. Like Michael Brown was unarmed, but yet he was reaching for the officer's weapon all right. And they found his DNA on the officer's weapon. So even though he was unarmed, he was still a deadly threat. He was making moves to try and kill that officer. All right. We got to just we just got to take time. And let the facts roll in. All right. Unless there's such, con you know, conclusive evidence like a video that immediately comes out that shows that it's clear as day. That is that's an unjust shooting. The CDC came out from a study showing that police shooting of blacks have gone down by 75% over the last three or four decades. 75%, because you got people out here talking about, you know, there is a, um, it's an epidemic. You know, you got some of these real far leftists talking about, you know, the, the police departments in these cities are still a, you know, remnant of the slave catching, you know, the slave catching force. That's really what they are. They're just, they're just remnant, they're slave catchers. I mean, really, come on. Is this the kind of rhetoric we're using in 2018? All right. Police departments filled with all types of people of different backgrounds, Latinos, blacks, Asians, all these type of mix. I live in Los Angeles, California, LAPD. I'm working around LAPD all the time, all filled. I can't tell you how many times I see black and Latino officers all over the place. But police shootings have gone down by 75 percent. You can look it up for yourself. 75 percent over the last 30 to 40 years. OK. 19 black men shot unarmed in 2017. 400 people get struck by lightning every year. You have a greater chance of being struck by lightning than you do being shot unarmed as a black man. But you do have a very high chance of being shot by somebody, another black man. You have a much higher chance of that. So this video is just to say, here we go again. The victim narrative, uh, victim narrative has led to these riots, all right? Because facts don't matter. These facts do not matter. Everybody that's jumping on the car, throwing the rocks, throwing the pee bottles, all that stuff, facts don't matter. It's just, hey, let's have a good time. I was seeing women in the video laughing, laughing at guys jumping on the cars. It's embarrassing. And it's just like, where is, where is the quiet, where is the calming voice? Where is the rational voice saying, hey, this is not the way we should act? Where is it at? I don't see it on CNN. I see a lot of anytime they can promote race baiting and victim narrative, they go for it. MSNBC, child please. <sighs> Sad to say, this is not going to be the last time you see something like this. But nonetheless, I just want to throw it out there. That once again, the victim narrative, and victim narrative is pushed and we see the outcome in riots in the street when the facts don't matter. That's my time, y'all. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you guys lending some time and watching this video. Go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. Appreciate all the comments in the previous videos that I've put up there. Comments from the people that like the content and comments from the haters. Thank you very much. I receive all. I receive it all. All in love. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful night. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. I'm out.